The next stage to any building, once you've got the walls in, is to start putting the doors and the windows. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. I'm going to start with the doors. So I'm going to go to my Create tab. And you'll see here that I've already got that selected. It's from the drop down. So where you would normally have standard, I've now got doors. And you'll notice that there are three different types of door that you can choose. Now, in actual fact, the way that doors are created is the same no matter which one of these three you pick. So I'm going to start with the pivot door. That's the most obvious one. And I'm going to zoom in here a little way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click to begin with. And I'm going to hold. And I'm going to drag out. And that's going to give me the width and the direction of the door. I'm going to let go. I'm going to push backwards. And that's going to give me the depth. And then I'm going to left click. And then I'm going to push the mouse away from me. And that's going to give me the height. And then when I left click again, that's my door created. If I right click that, that'll prevent me from making any more doors. And I'll now go to the Modify tab. Now, one thing you'll probably notice here is that the door is in fact open. That's because I was playing around with these just a moment ago. Normally what would happen is your doors would come in as being closed like that. And I can, once I've gone to my Modify tab, decide whether I want to have that door open or closed. The options that I've got here at the beginning, at the parameters, will define the height of my door, the width of my door, and also the depth. I can have this as a double door, which will normally mean you'd have a slightly wider door. And again, that can open that way, or I can flip the swing and it can open this way. If it's a single door, I also have the option to flip the hinge as well as the swing. So really, there's no excuse for sort of getting your door to look exactly the way that you want it to in the direction that you want it to be. Moving down through the options here, I can change the width of the frame. Note, though, that that actually increases the size of the frame. So the width of the door is always from here to here, and then you've got the frame on top of that. So if I make my width for this single door 1 meter 20, that's the width we've got here. It's then the frame which is on top of that. You notice that the width of the door isn't actually changing. So we can safely assume from that that from hit this inside edge to that inside edge is the width that we're talking about. And then the frame is on top of that. So if you've measured your door from being from there to there, which is the outside edge, go back and measure it again, really. Um, the depth of my door, you can see here we can actually add to the depth, the overall depth of the frame. And also we've got something in here called the door offset. Now at the moment the door is right at the back here. And if I offset that door, you see I can actually put it right in the middle of the frame. So if we do an F3 there, you can actually see that, let's just reduce the depth of this door slightly, there we go, that because I've moved this uh, door offset by 8 units or 8 centimetres, uh, let's try and move that back again, there we go, let's get my mouse in the right place. And I'll just put that in the correct place. So that's right in the middle of the door there. So that's handy. Press F3 to come back to solid. Obviously, I want to generate mapping coordinates for this, but not quite real world mapping coordinates yet. And then I'll close my first initial general parameters. Now, we've got some leaf parameters in here. And this is something that's um, quite important. At the moment, we've only got one panel. OK, so what I want to do is maybe add a panel in vertically and add one in horizontally and the muntin is the bit in the middle here this gap in the middle so I want to increase the size of that there we go let's try not to make it too large but also I want to increase the depth because at the moment the thickness is very thin so if I increase that depth there you see we're making things that little bit more obvious so you're going to get some nice shadows happening in there and I can also change the width of the top rail, you can see there, and also the bottom rail as well. Quite often you find that doors will have a much larger bottom rail. It's a little bit like a kickboard. So let's just decrease that in there. I'm actually going to close this door, so I'll come back to my parameters, just make it easier for everybody to see. There we go. So there you go, there's our sort of basic front door, as it were. But I can also add into this. I can add in the fact that I'd like these 
to be beveled in the corners. You can see there. So I've got a, a thickness one. And you can see what's happening when I play around with these. What I'm doing is we're adding in the thicknesses here of our bevels. And you can see there that's actually it's a little bit difficult to see from some angles. I hope by moving around I can make this a bit more obvious for you. So we've actually got a part that comes out and goes back in there. And you can see I can make this a little bit thicker or thinner. And really what we're talking about is the thickness along here. And I can change this middle thickness there from 0.25. Yeah. So that's the thickness in here. And I've also got a width, which is obviously this width here. And I've got a width number two, which is going to refer to the width of the section that's been um, raised up. So we could sort of really come right the way in and make this very sort of funky looking door shape. Not quite sure if I want that width number two to be quite that bad, perhaps just something like that. And what you've got there is a sort of a very, very sort of classic kind of look to the feel uh, of the door there. Um, obviously, you can say no panels at all, or beveled, or we can make glass, which would have glass in here, and that glass would then have a thickness based upon your system units. So in my case, if I'm using centimetres, that's going to be 0.25 of a centimetre. Now, what I might actually want is for that to be one whole centimetre, uh, or even 0.5, actually, probably 5 mil would be yeah, absolutely fine, a tough and safety glass. I'm going to go with this one, though, because I quite like that. So that's going to be the door that we're going to create. If I come back here, I've also got sliding doors, which are obviously patio doors. So if I left click and drag, that's giving me my one point. Oh, so you've got to be careful with this. Left click, drag the width, let go, push back for the depth, push up for the height. And you can see here we've got um, an open or closed. I can flip the slide. And I can flip it to be at the front or the back, depending on how I want it to be. Again, I've got a generalized height, generalized width, and a generalized depth. I can create the frame. This is all the same as before, door offset, all the rest of it. And I've pretty much got um, my leaf panels, which will look pretty odd if this is... Um... So you get more like a Japanese door if you start doing something like this give you an idea there of what can be done with it and again we've got the whole thing with the beveled edges and and so on and so forth so you can make it look as unique as you might like uh, my other option of course is for a bifold um, let me just get this there we go bifold back and up and as I open that up you can see there's my bifolding door and again, we've got all of the same properties you get for your leaf parameters, for the door, for the double doors here, which I think looks quite cool. So you've got a wardrobe, maybe a walk-in wardrobe, maybe you want to flip the swing there. Um, so you open out and then you walk into your walk-in wardrobe. So we've got sort of lots of different ideas here of what you could use as internal doors and external doors. Let's just get rid of some of these for the moment. So that's how we actually sort of create our doors. Um, what about putting a door in this wall? Well, in actual fact, it couldn't be easier. I'm going to select the wall section and press Alt-X just to make it slightly see-through. And I'm also going to turn on my 3D snap and make sure that's set to edge because I want to make sure that my door connects with this wall. Remember, this wall, when we created it, was an AEC extended wall and that means that it's quite special because when I say pivot door here and I just left click and remember this has got my old settings so I might have to get rid of some of these and I push that back and then I push up for the door there we go what I'm gonna to have to do is go to my modifier and let's just select this wall and press alt X now remember that this wall was solid up until a moment ago wasn't it if I just play around with this and I pull the height down a little way, because that's a ridiculously wide door. There we go. If I now open this door, check out what's happened. Look, we've got a hole in the door. We've got a hole in the wall, rather, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, just turn off the snap there, pull this back into the middle a little bit. So when the door opens, 
Hit the swing. There we go. No, not the hinge. There we go. So when the door opens, we've automatically created a hole within that wall. And what's great about this is if our client comes back and says, oh, I want a slightly different door. Maybe, um, I don't know, we want the uh, we want the frame width to be slightly less. We can do that. Uh, if we close the door a little bit, maybe we want just a plain door there or a plainer door. So we're not going to have quite so much with the beveling. Maybe our, um, our bottom rail will be a little less aggressive there. Maybe our muntin will be a little bit thinner. You know, we can make all of those changes, and yet still, when I come back to my open and closed door, what I'm getting is a hole. I can move this around, and you can see that the hole actually updates as I move along and I move around. So this is brilliant. This is very, very quick, very, very simple, and very, very easy to use. So I suggest you spend some time playing around with the doors. Get used to doing the width and the depth and the height. Those are the things that are, are, are sort of going to throw you to begin with. And once you've created your AEC wall, you can then use one of these doors or AEC extended doors, max design doors, whatever you want to call them. Make sure that you've got your snap switched on and you're going to snap to the edge so that you do actually find that, that wall and you're not sort of scrabbling around to find it. And once you've done that, you can then just create your door, play around with it, make as many changes as you want, and it will automatically create the hole for the door for you.